it was organized you know, uh, so that we can uh, see where is the disease, where it's going, and just discuss the, the people it has, the problems it has, um, what, what it can do, what we can do with it. Um, uh, have you heard of Mort Dammel? Um, this is um, his, which his main point is um, the, 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 <coughs> the point of where Ikiwiki Wiki is, uh, where it can move. Um, how it did develop, how it will develop. And um, the other thing is basically um, there's some, some issues, some topics that I would, uh, I'd like to talk about, but um, I'd like to collect topics as well in the course of the meeting so that we could um, discuss other things. Uh, yeah, uh, speaking of, of um, general direction and, and where IkiWiki is, um, my impression is that it from from a very active start, it's now reached a stage where it where the where thing all the things we usually need uh, are in a very good working order. There are plugins for several special purpose purpose applications, um, and most of what's currently active is um, basically bug fixing or um, develop uh, with yeah, working on some um, some things with respect to portability. I think. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Mac, Mac, there, there's been a recent discussion on Mac OS. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my question <coughs> for, uh, for you is where, where do you see uh, IkiWiki moving? Uh, do, do you see more movement to come? Uh, do you have a second mic that you can talk to it? Is there a mic like Leon? Talk to me? Is there a mic on? Is there a mic on? Is there a light on your mic? Yeah, it is. This is the second one. I don't want to start this all <laughs> over again. Hello? Just have to move your words. Yeah. So for those on the stream who might not have heard, Chris, uh, Christian asked me, I guess, where Hiwiki is going now. Uh, I think you're basically right. It's a kind of a mature project in a way, um, it's what, nine years old or something, I don't remember. Um, kind of, it's in, right now I kind of think of it as being in not really maintenance mode because we're still actively adding features and stuff, but I'm not really actively developing it on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm mostly just merging patches that other people come up with and then fixing the worst bug reports. And uh, you know, I don't have an awful lot of time for working on it myself, but I think there's enough other people that it's keeping keeping on with some momentum being developed. Um, as far as where I anticipate it going, I, uh, you know, I personally plan to continue using it for the foreseeable future and uh, keep maintaining it as long as that's going on, but um, I don't know if I'm going to be doing some massive, like, a rewrite or anything like that. I, I doubt that I would have the time to do something like that, even though it might be interesting. And uh, I'm kind of, I've lost a lot of my Perl hacking abilities because of learning other languages, so I'm kind of, my productivity in Perl has gone way down, so that kind of limits how much time I want to spend on, on IkiWiki as far as detailed patch review and coding and that kind of thing, so getting patches into a good state before I look at them as the best thing <laughs> from my point of view. Uh, how, how, ma how many people do you estimate are, are active around IkiWiki or is, is it only you who, who, commit, who, who finally commits to things? Is um, it yeah, it's pretty much just me who has final review and commit. Um, there's no particular reason that that's the case. Um, that's just how you know, the default kind of works out. But um, there are... Um, um, Simon McVitie uh, in the UK um, would be probably the first person I'd happily give a commit bit to anytime he wants it. Um, I assume, I'm, you know, we haven't really talked about it, but he's made a lot of patches and I trust him pretty much implicitly with anything. If he just signs it off, I just merge it immediately. So uh, he effectively has a commit bit. <coughs> Ideas, questions so far from? A slightly mischievous question. So the rewrite in Haskell is off then? 
Um, unless I have three to five years that I suddenly don't have something else to work on. <laughs> Uh, one of my pet peeves right now um, is about localization. Uh, we have the wonderful uh, PO plugin that is really, really great. Unfortunately, as soon as you start trying to get something really neat and clean, uh, you hit the templates. Uh, and the templates right now are not localized and can't be localized. And also, the templating system is pretty airy. That's one thing that, that could be worked on. I, if somebody would like to redo the templating system and could come up with a patch and get it reviewed by a couple of people, I would be happy to swap it out. And as far as translating the templates, I do have a plan to do that. It's basically generate them from a Perl script and then translate the Perl script. So you know, that way you don't have to deal with, trans with a special translation layer just for the template system. Um, it's something that somebody needs to work on. I personally don't have a you know, an itch regarding translation, so being monolingual. Uh, uh, just so to get a rough impression, um, are there many people around here who are actively using EQVK translations? Okay, so there are, you know, for, I for, I for my part usually have the wiki set up in English and then dump whatever content I have in <coughs> English. I've I've not used the PO plugin before. Is is there a way to preview a page with all the wiki links and everything, how it's rendered before committing it? The, the wiki links are previewed. Um, it's just a few. Um, uh, what what is not previewed is things like uh, the sidebar thing. But no, no, no. Wha when I edit a file with my text editor and before committing it I, I well my if you look at my commit log in ikiwiki it's like added that page formatting 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 link formatting tag <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, you can actually uh, run ikiwiki uh, without um without having it committed if you're speaking of a lo um when you said uh, you're using the editor i assume you have a local copy and edit in there you can just run ikiwiki um, from that source without having a committed state. There, there's also a switch, I forget the name, but it'll dump out, it'll render the page to standard output, um, just one page, and I think you have to either give it your setup file or it doesn't uh, have all the, all the settings in your setup file, so it's not perfect. With regards to running ikiwiki without committing it, uh, that'd be good. Um, there's one issue I had, which uh, I think I have two or three copies of the repository, uh, and because in the in the tutorial for setting up the site, it says that you need to make a git bear repository there and a working repository here, and then where the repository end up, and I followed it, but then I ended up basically cargo culting what was in it. Um, it's not clear to me in the long run what these bits are for, uh, which makes it harder for me to manipulate and maintain. Um, yes, um, I thought maybe I can run IkiWiki by hand, but then in which repository, and maybe do I screw up one repository if I run it in the other, or... Meh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what, what can be a little, uh, little tedious is... Uh the the paths you have in the setup file are might be relative paths if you set it up without passing absolute paths. So that's the only thing you have to consider when you run ikiwik when when you're you're thinking cross repository. Apart from that, um, there's a bunch of metadata ikiwiki collects in the so in the <coughs> source repository, which is the check checked out version. Um, so that's that's where Ikiwiki keeps its own stuff as well, what, which is I think part of the reason why there is the source repository at all. Um, the bear repository, you mean? You no. mean the bear repository? No, the the, the regular source dir. That's that's where ah. there's a dot Ikiwiki yep. which contains all the all that information data. is stuff that can be regenerated or downloaded or something. It's not nothing that you have to keep uh, hold of. Um, you can simplify your uh, setup with the 
with the ba get, you can get rid of the bare repository if you don't want it and just have you know one repository local and one remote or something like that. Um, the only reason the uh, walkthrough as you set up the bare repository is because most people you know th they find it easier to have a bare git repository to use just because of how git works but you can definitely do it the other way and simplify things down. Um, I only have one repository, one copy on my laptop of repositories. And I run the, uh, you know, I just run Icky Wiki with the setup file and then know that it's going to work on the right repository because, like Christian said, I have the full absolute paths pointing to it. Oh, um, like you said, I have absolute paths pointing from my set in my setup file pointing at the right repository to use. How regarding uh, this is, I've seen um, like Ruby compiler, uh, they have a command like server, and then it fires up a, a server that runs uh, a, a web server and you can connect, and it like renders renders the pages live, so you can actually preview. Uh, is that something that is would be very hard to do with the current IkiWiki? Um Actually, it shouldn't be that hard to do, given that there is the option to pipe out the result of rendering a single page to standard out. So you could even have implement that standalone from IkiWiki. Hmm. Just have a server that requests the pages. I think um, you would have to have the server um, either have all the all the HTML files built and stored somewhere, or um, render them all on the fly, and you know, otherwise links wouldn't work. I mean, there's definitely you could definitely have some kind of a IkiWiki Insta Web thing. Um, I, it, it's worth thinking about. I haven't really thought about doing it, and maybe it's a good idea. I just run a HTTP server on my laptop, <laughs> the, so then. It's one less complication, right? It's one less thing that's different between my preview setup and the production setup. But you don't have live rendering. Well, uh, yeah, sure I do because I install, uh, when I run IkiWiki, it installs into the d directory which is viewed by, by the, which is served by the web server and, and I refresh the browser, okay? It doesn't auto refresh, but other than that, it's live. Maybe I don't understand the goal. Well, the, the Ruby things I've seen is that you save the file and you refresh the browser and you have the updated rendered version. So with your setup, you still have to call IkiWiki manually okay. to refresh. That's that's one extra step. That, well, uh, an Insta web thing would be interesting because when doing loads of massive edits, um, w if I rebuild my wiki, it would take me about 30 or 40 seconds. Uh, so that that doesn't quite work <coughs> for for quick more quick turnover of edits. So if if there's a running wiki as a web server temporarily, so it keeps state in memory and only observe and quickly renders uh, has everything ready to render a page quickly for when one page changes. That kind of makes sense. So um, there's a more general problem here with IkiWiki's scalability to a whole lot of pages. And if you're using the Poe plugin, like Integrity's over here saying, mine's really, really slow because, you know, Poe is, it runs a lot of um, third-party commands and stuff. So, but, but just even if you're just using regular IkiWiki, when you get up to, you know, tens or hundreds, I don't know how many thousands of pages, you get quite slow just because it has to, uh, every time it's run, it... Uh, it reads in the index file and then writes it back out. And that's a uh, completely unoptimized data storage format that, you know, has not changed in a long time. And if you switched it to, say, using SQLite or something and had a proper database, you might not even need to run IkiWiki um, as a persistent process to get a massive speed increase. And so this is something that is on my long-term to-do list and really needs to happen, I think. Um, you know, I have various people running sites that I'm responsible for that, you know, posting comments and things to them just gets quite slow. And, um, you know, trying to uh, deal with that, I'd really like to get there. I just, 
heaven has enough to it to do it. And if somebody wants to sit down and try to, I mean, it's really simple Perl code right now. It just dumps out like basically raw serialized data out to disk and loads it back up. And you know, finding a way to to convert that to a database would probably probably someone who knows databases better than I would find it much easier than I would. So. I was uh, looking into uh, a while ago, looking into um, adding support for the Mallard format to Ubiki, yeah. uh, because I think it's really nice format for writing documentation. Um, you can get get a lot of good cross linking uh, for free. Uh, M A W L, -L A R D. It's okay. uh, so the one that GNOME uses oh. now nowadays, yeah. and. Um, the problem is uh, that the processor there always operates on a whole directory at once, so parses all the pages, and and trying to get that to, to integrate with the PO was pretty uh, difficult because IkiWiki thinks uh, always to uh, it can call uh, something for each page on its own. So I don't know if you have an idea how to go about that. That's really dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it always, uh, since it does all the cross-linking, it's oh always yeah. generating all the HTML files uh, from, from one directory at once, so. Um, yeah. um. In that case, the Mallard compiler is doing part of the, world of uh, the work of WikiWiki, Wiki, then you would, the cross-linking that it needs to read the whole directory to do is what you do in IkiWiki. Wiki. So, well, I don't know how that works, but I, mean, I, I haven't seen Malag, but I just took a note to look at it. But for what you say, if it needs to read a whole directory to do cross-linking, it sounds to me exactly what IkiWiki is doing. So one file can be read with and the markup interpreted, and then you let IkiWiki do the cross-linking part. But I don't know what if Malar does this cross-linking in a way different than what IkiWiki does. So it seems to me that um, either I have to teach IkiWiki not to do uh, profile processing in this one directory, or I uh, have to teach the Malar compiler to look at the index file of IkiWiki. If that's uh, just, just remember one page at a time, and then uh, yeah, and 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 to cache the. Um, the information somewhere. Actually, if, if uh, is this is more about the, the the plain text syntax of Mallard, isn't it? Or what's what's the whole point of what's 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 what is what you like about Mallard? Well, well the syntax is a pretty simple XML, uh, but uh, what I really like is the the, the way that it um, connects the different nodes uh, by semantic mm. things. So I I don't know if it makes sense to re-implement all the all of that in Perl. Semantic is, is is part of the part of my personal wish list, by the way. <laughs> so, I had a related question about performance, and I remember somebody asking this some years ago, which is, uh, is uh, is a multi-threaded wiki wiki going to happen ever? <laughs> See previous comment about re-implementing wiki wiki in Haskell. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I yeah. I can't imagine mm -hmm. taking the current. Code base and making and threading it. It just okay. that was more like uh, the question. Yeah, um, maybe there's some hat trick that you could pull that avoids having to deal with locks everywhere. But I don't know. I don't have the impression either. So that that this is something that's that's easily possible, short of rewriting half of Wikiwiki. Wiki. I oh. think it would be possible to maybe thread off um, rendering. If you somehow made the render pipeline into an actual pipeline, then maybe you could, you know, thread that in some <coughs> way. Um, maybe. Probably depends on what we want to, to optimize. It, wh whether it's plugins that spend much time in the in the scanning part of the process where the index database is regenerated, or whether they spend time actually rendering. Because whatever you render, you have to wait for the for the for the index database to be complete because you want to to you want to evaluate page page specs and that stuff, and that can't be done before uh, before you have a complete knowledge of the 
the rest of the system. It might be possible to parallelize the scanning phase too using the same kind of a pipeline. But right. again, you know, I, I think a lot of the scanning stuff actually does go in and munges internal state. I think that's most most of the plugins that do things at the scanning phase want to store it for later, and so then you run into threading issues again. And right. Yeah. Actually, the thing is, that there's no there there the, the, this would be a massive change in the plugin API. I think the, the plugins that are available are a big part of what makes IkiWiki. Um, okay, so um, if, if, if no more topics come up now, um, there's, there's one thing I'd, I'd like to, to go over with you, um, which has, which okay, uh, the thing is, um, I assembled a list of, of topics I've been working in IkiWiki over the past, and turns out um, it of, um, there's often the topic of um, pages having their page title and having their destination file and having their source file and those things getting um, mixed up. I think that's partially also because of the the um, history back in the early d early days. Um, there was a, a slightly different syntax for commands and links, so you had to have underscores in your links. And this Time and again, this resurfaces in in underscore escapes showing up all around the code, or, or all around the wiki. Wait a second. Yeah. Um, so basically, for. For each page, there's a, a source file, there's a, a rendered file, there's a, a kind of. Uh, actually, I'm I'm not sure about that. Is there such a thing as a page name for each file? Um, yeah, yeah, there is. That's basically that. That's dir a underscore dir b, and that's the kind of base name from which the other thing is constructed. <coughs> and there's of course a w w there are ways of linking to that, which can be without with or without underscores, and there's the title which. In which the underscores are stripped. So actually, I, I, I would have liked to have this completed for a for a IkiWiki explanation page on the various kind of titles. Um, because this is like a, the I think I'm under the impression that this is a recurring theme of 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 the wrong wrong kind of entity showing up in in plugins. Um, I don't know. I uh, I know there's a couple of cases where you'll. Uh, where the crazy escaped file names can make it hard to figure out what the right thing to type to get a wiki link is, for example. If you mm. have, you know, you're like, you're looking at a page in your browser and you know what the URL is, but that doesn't mean that you can easily figure out what the actual <laughs> page name is well to link to it. My impression was that you can al always get the page name you can link to by copy pasting the title line, unless you set a meta title. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But I don't know that if, I, if I've ever seen an example of underscores leaking out in the uh, right Yeah, place. Um, it, give me a second. Um, um, there, uh, there has been um, both ways actually. Um, when you when you when you try to intentionally create an underscore in a IkiWiki link, even if you explicitly set a title, you have to go the other way around and have to. The I, thi I think this is um, this is a kind of traditional feature, from from what my impression was, and the other is on the and the um, what is it uh, link map plugin that just is just okay. I can see link map having that kind of problem. Yes. Yeah. Uh. Um, generally concerning uh, the way uh, links are put, how do you feel about uh, incompatible changes with the with the link format? Because basically, IkiWiki, uh, that's main, maybe a not so well known feature. IkiWiki does have a transition mechanism for that, so you ha you can call IkiWiki to, to transition your pages from one version to the next. But I'm under the impression that not all users of IkiWiki would actually would 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 have this applied if we went to go on making incompatible changes. So, what's your opinion on on that? Yeah, um, yeah, we haven't used the transition thing for many things that need you know that everybody has to do uh, there there was um, a patch which I unfortunately haven't merged to um, 
change something about uh, page spec or about um, uh, about preprocessor directives, and would have needed a transition, a manual, you know, a, a mandatory transition, and. Uh, yeah, I don't know that we could guarantee that everybody does it, but then again, I don't try to guarantee that everybody okay. maintains their system. So I'm kind of okay with this kind of transition, at least in theory, I think, um, as long as we don't have a lot of them. Okay. Um, do, do you think we we w the there's room for development so that um, I actually I don't know about the current version number. That there, there will be kind of a collective transition version again. Um, yeah, I mean, th this the kind of transition you're talking about would mean a new major version number, and yeah. and then we could kind of spool some transitions up and. Yeah, I yeah. Mean that would be the best way to do it. If you have more than one pending, maybe the preprocessor yeah. directive thing on your thing or something. Because thing is, um, one of one of the the, the one of the uh, things I've been discussing the last few days with 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 S McV, uh was the uh, the issue of um, having typed links. For um, usu usually in Ikibiki, you, um much depends on the on the relationship between pages that's established by having a link from one page to another. And there are some plugins so far that um, create typed links. So when you tag a page by saying tag this tag, this creates a link to the tagged page. Um, but also claims that this link is a tag relationship, and you can later on query for all pages that are tagged thus, and thus differentiate between just linking somewhere <laughs> and actively saying this is a page of tag, so cate category A. And we've been talking about generalizing this to to um, because it will solve the problem of of, for example, implementing bug trackers which have blocking relationships. Um, this this might la this might lend itself to an extension to the link format, because it just I mean how many how often does the pipe <coughs> character show up in a in a URL? Uh, there the, there'd be room for extension. Okay. I can see something like that going in in the transition if that's what you're thinking. Yeah, that that I think that that would be an an example of a of a like. 4.2015 <laughs> uh, version. Yeah, I, I don't know how it's related. Um, it's about it's about uh, uh, using page source in in parent links. Uh, but maybe I can show you the use case where like I had to actually do crazy stuff. Uh, if you're interested. Uh, do you have it online? Yeah, yeah. Uh. Mm -hmm. So just um, it's a US layout. Okay. Yeah. Add them. Uh, yeah. It's always nice to see a new WikiWiki Wiki site that I've never seen before. <laughs> uh, so the thing is, it's multilingual, uh, Wiki, Wiki. Uh And so what I was telling before is that I had to actually translate the template here. And so uh, we still have French on the footer, for example, even if we're, you, you are in, in the English version. Uh, but this is not the, the my main problem is about uh, actually um, so, if you go in the sub page, this is a parent link. And to get this with a proper caps and nice uh, layout, I need to actually have the page name that is like capital A association. Uh, that's one thing. And also, like, if I have that in, in the US version, the English version, then it's not translated. And it's all about like how this handling of, of page tutorial and parent linking are related uh, sometimes. Uh. Yeah, um, I think the parent links is a plugin now, isn't it? I, so in theory, you could modify it and make one that uppercases or something. Yeah, you, you, you can't, I can, I'm afraid you can't unconditionally, unconditionally uppercase. You'd rather have to use the page title. But this would I not I only solve the uppercasing. 
can't use the page title for technical. I think that it doesn't know the page title at the point that it's doing parent link stuff. Is um, there, there are issues like this with dependencies of one thing on another. You can't always rely on having access to the page title. Okay, so you'd we'd, we'd, we'd then depend on the full contents of the parent page, basically. Exactly, and then when you recompile, you have a might. I mean, when you change one page, you have to recompile like everything Kaboom. else. Kaboom. Yeah. As far as your footer, by the way, there, there's something that I've wanted to do and never got around to it, but if somebody would like to do it, um, which is generalize the sidebar plugin into a generic piece of the page plugin so that you can have into the, you know, whatever pieces of the page you like, and then you can have a file in this directory that's a sidebar for this subdirectory or anything below it. You know, you can have a sidebar on the other side, you can have a header, you can have an alert notice, whatever. Basically, that would that would solve part of the templating issue because the page would not anymore consist of template. Well, the templates would become very simple because they consist mainly of sidebars. Yeah, I, I think you could probably end up with a, with a template that's a bit a bit simpler. Um, I don't know if it would completely simplify it. Of course, this also plays into maybe getting a bootstrap, a Twitter bootstrap, or some other modern theme for IkiWiki. Yeah. In to IkiWiki itself. I've, I've seen one, one implementation of Bootstrap, but tried to generalize it and terribly failed because it it's just too much dependent. Basically, it changes the templates, yeah, and exactly. then you're out of luck but when you have any uh, other plugins. But I'm perfectly happy to have a... It is possible now to have something in the page template that's conditional on the theme that you're using. So you can easily... Well, not easily, but you can put it all in one template, and then I can maintain it in theory it's just one copy of things with branches for different plugins. So it's it's doable, I think. Somebody just has to sit down and make it work. And, you know, I put that piece in just to make that possible. It should work. Okay. It sounds like a good idea, yeah? Could you go to um, your overview of the different page name things? Um, yeah, uh, especially the, the topic of, um, of index.mdwn versus uh, page b.mdwn um, is, uh, I, every time I do something with that, I have to look up the documentation again and, and uh, check uh, which flag I'm supposed to, s to be setting of the, of the two flags there. Um, and so I was just thinking earlier, since uh, we were talking about a transition in the format, does it make sense um, to maybe only keep one flag um, to keep URLs compatible per site, but move the file around in the Git when once the transition hits and just say we pick one of these versions and, and uh, go, go with that? I... Uh I don't really see a strong reason. I mean, the way I think about it is there's one way to do it, and then there's this index pages thing that maybe somebody uses, but it was just added because somebody wanted it. I don't consider it a big deal. Um, you know, I, I just I pruned it out of my mental model, and then I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, and but but that's a good example because I don't know exactly which the one way that we to do it you're talking about because I, I have no idea w again at this point which things, uh, which flag does what? Um, the one way is the default way, which is if you have page name dot mwn, then you get a page name file. And otherwise, if you have a, uh, if you want your index, the only index dot mwn you have is for the top level index because there's no way to have it otherwise. So it's a special case, mm -hmm. which is slightly ugly, but other than that, <coughs> it's quite simple. So it means you have a, um, if you have subpages, you always have a, a directory without an index HTML file, and you get the uh, directory listing if, no if no somebody no. links to Well, it. if you have subpages, you, you make a subdirectory, and you put the pages in there, and then you probably have a top-level page. So you have subdir.mdwn, which then links to whatever's in there or whatever. If you leave that out, then yeah, you get a... Yeah, yeah, but if somebody strips off the last part of an URL uh, yeah. until the then slash... Then might get a directory listing if okay. you haven't added a page there. But you can always turn on the um, 
the, the auto the whatever, auto. yeah, that, and then auto get auto generated index.mdwms if you don't okay. have them. Yeah, I, I still find the topic rather annoying to wrap my head around, to be honest. So, uh, I, I think if I were going to do it again, I would just have um, the not have a translation layer between your input and your output file, just have identical input and output. That makes it mentally simpler to model. Yeah. I think uh, I've, I've had discussions in 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 all of the in 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 all of the four combinations that um, that can uh, sp spring up there, and there are proponents of all all those varieties. So I think it's it's not too bad to have a, a tr to have a single translation layer as long as all the plugins are aware that they just can't tell which is the source file, which is the destination file, but just go th go through the appropriate function of yeah. <coughs> whichever, whichever it is in the in the particular cases, and be done with that. Yeah. Quick comment: Your idea about like the sidebar, uh, it would actually solve my parent leaking problem. Because I could have a header uh, file, and in the various subdirectory, they would just replace that with the localized version. So, well, there, there is an open to do item about it with some ideas. I can't give you a link off the top of my head, but I know it, I know it exists. It's from about three years ago. So you'd be basically doing um, in the in the sub in the subject page something like um, inline dot dot slash um, dot dot slash um, header. Or, or what was your idea exactly? It's essentially inlining, but it, instead of having to manually put the inline directive in, it just y it says if you have say a div with id equals. Oh yeah, it would be inherit header, it just just inherit down or yeah. something like that. Okay, yeah, that would actually be even easier. Um, from uh, on on the more more uh, like um. Great on the more crazy idea um, um, end of the of the of the things I've been working on, um, there's been the topic of uh, of, s of adding semant adding uh, RDF semantics to to IkiWiki, <coughs> uh, which is basically what you do when you have uh, relationships between pages like this page blocks that page in terms of bug tracking or or having a wiki trader through it. And um, I started to think about um, having the whole index DB file. Um, as a s as a rest, um, as an RDF database, because basically everything everything we state so far in there, as far as I understand it, is uh, metadata about the pages, uh, which lends itself to being stored in RDF, and could then even be could then be easily queried. Um, the query query results could be could be validated, so we wouldn't have the issues of um, of knowing what um, what kind of scanned data has changed. And I think that could solve some of the some of the structured data prob problems or issues as well. But I'm afraid this would be bothering a bothering a minor rewrite. Yeah, I, I don't know anything about RDF really, so you know I don't know if I'll ever wrap my head around it. Uh, I don't know if something like you're talking about would be efficient or <laughs> anything like that. Uh, you know, um, yeah, you are right. Everything that's stored in the index D yeah, yeah. Everything in the index DB is per page. It's all, you know, it's basically a hash from page to information. <coughs> page, yep. So, um, is anyone around who has uh, used um, RDF in that context so far, or with other wikis? Yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can. I think I've I've covered the the topics I've we've covered the topics I've wanted to talk about. Q &A. Yeah, th uh, that's that's exactly the thing. Uh, Sparkle is the query language to to RDF, and basically we we could still have the r the regular simple page specs, but we could form r rather powerful queries toward the the, the index database, and have um have th those results um printed there. And by caching the queries and the results, uh, we could um, uh, we could observe 
if a change if a change to the rendered page is necessary or not. Um. This is kind of our automatically done already for some page specs. It figures out that it the page spec yeah, causes a dependency. Yeah, but it only but it only works for page specs and not for th things like um, page title and other metadata, and that would be just the same thing then. Right. So so we could if if we didn't have the the um, generic sidebar solution, we could do for example this um, page title substitution um, with that. Yeah, so since we were thinking about optimizing the index database anyhow, um, do you, from the top of, your top of your head, uh, know something that has a performance similar to SQLite or something so you don't have to rewrite the file uh, continuously and that would store RDF triples? Um, there are a bunch of databases that, are, um, that, that store RDF triples. Um, some of them just use um, SQLite as a backend. So I mean, a triple store is not something terribly complicated to set up in a database. Yeah. Um. I, I thought I'd tell an amusing story um, about SQLite. I uh, was recently at a small Linux conference and ended up sitting down across from a guy who eventually transpired as the author of SQLite. And uh, we started talking about our respective um, you know, version control. He's also the author of Fossil. So we talked about our respective version control backed wikis. <laughs> um, but he had a much better database story than I did. Uh, is there anyone, uh, webmasters of, of www.debian.org around? <laughs> 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 you, you, you are part of the web team, uh, Debian web team. Which room was this? Uh, uh, <laughs> would, would you want to switch from, from WML to WikiWiki? Uh, <coughs> wh what would be missing then? You know. um, well, uh, with respect to translation, there's a lot of things tailored around how it works with CVS, which is also the part of the reason which, which stalls us from switching to any other VCS. But I'm not objecting to any switch. Uh, there's a lot of uh, auto-generated stuff in the website, um, which I understand shouldn't be much of a problem with proper tailored IkiWiki plugins, but it, needed, it needs someone to write it. We also don't object to switch to Git, but um, we have to keep in mind that a lot of translators only want to check out the English language and their language and not the complete history <coughs> and, and which gets pretty heavy for uh, CVS uh, history for well over 10 years and, and 30 something languages. Um, so switching VCS from that point of view isn't that easy and also from the generation part, um, it needs someone to do the work. Uh, we don't object to it, but uh, a lot of people have, yeah, switch to this and that. And when we ask them to help us out to make the switch happen, um, people turn silent pretty quickly. Uh, um, I will add that while WikiWiki Wiki is primarily a Git-based wiki, it actually now has excellent CVS support from what I'm told. I've never actually tried <laughs> to use it. But um, I believe that NetBSD or something like that is using IkiWiki with CVS as their backend and apparently managing okay. I'm, I'm personally absolutely not objecting to Git, but uh, there are some constraints which need CVS to be kept in mind uh, if it works for people. It, I, um, it just came to my mind that there was one thing I'd, I would have liked to present, um, which is a, um, uh, basically another way of extending IkiWiki I've, I've figured out. Um, the thing is, um, when, you do when you do templates, 
um, there's sometimes the need to do something more powerful than just uh, template substitution. But usually um, that comes with um, either very complex nestings of directives or nesting of, of inclusions uh, or writing your own <coughs> um, plugin, which then again is under a complete, e even, even if you write plugins per, um, for, for a particular IkiWiki instance, they are not managed in that inside that wiki, but they are they are independent of it. And uh, what I've came up with for basically my my local server's Minecraft wiki um, was um, where do we have it? Um, did I just? Okay, maybe I forgot to link it there. Um, is uh, having uh, having plugins that are um, written as uh, having templates that are written in Python instead of uh, just plain text. Uh, the main thing, of course, this is our security considerations. Um, but given there is <coughs> um, there is now um, PyPy sandbox in Debian, which can be restricted down to not being able to do anything apart from reading standard in and out. Um. I'm always very leery of language sandboxes, and I don't know if I want to go there. Um, are you sure that it's restricted to this? Are you sure that it couldn't be used to perform side <laughs> channel attacks against some other thing on the service just by loading the CPU and looking at the intervals between stuff? Or, you know, who knows? I mean, I, I <laughs> I'm very leery about putting a general purpose language into IkiWiki. Let, let's say I'm, I, I'm as con I'm roughly as confident in PyPy Sandbox than I am in the, uh, than I'm confident in the JavaScript engine in my browser. And that's how confident it's. And <laughs> that's how that and that's uh, that amounts <laughs> to, um, it's a reasonable assumption that it should that there if that if someone manages to break out, there's a serious bug behind it as um, as there can be a bug everywhere else that can be exploited. I mean, I just can't see this being a default thing. I am no, definitely yeah. not. And so you're still stuck with the current not so great templates. And people have talked about putting in new ones, but I'm never sure if it's actually better or if it's just new. I didn't <coughs> understand what people have talked about. You know, switching to a different template system. Okay. But I'm never sure. You know, if, if it's actually a good switch or just something different. Well, uh, one thing that. Uh, was a bit annoying for me is that I uh, had a nice wiki and I could actually hire somebody to translate it for me using the PO files and just said, here is a G translator, <coughs> please do that. And then I tried to hire somebody to write uh, some CSS for me or a template and it was completely impossible. So um, I for one would appreciate something that's a bit more in line with modern templating systems just because I don't have to do all the work myself. And See, the only modern templating system that I know is um, Yassad's, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, what? No, not, uh, no, it's not Yad Yada. I'm, uh, yes, thank you, Shakespeare. The Shakespearean templates, which are type save compiled crazy templates, uh, which are great, but are not appropriate for IkiWiki. Um, <laughs> uh, so I don't know modern templating systems and Whenever I look at a templating system, I always feel like it's not right. I've never seen one that I've been happy with, so. I mean, there is PHP. <laughs> I think that if we had a built-in language, maybe making it be JavaScript would be a much more web 2 point whatever we're at thing. <laughs> More ideas or topic to bring topics to bring up? Um, one thing which, when I when I talk to people about using IkiWiki and try to make them use IkiWiki, the, the, the really the hardest bit is it's really ugly by default. It's really ugly. Let's <laughs> not mince words. And it's really hard to make it pretty. I mean, 
you know how how hard it was for me to make <coughs> one particular site where you helped me, but else it's 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 really ugly. So I know I totally failed to to make it even a tiny little bit less ugly. It so I, I think it would really help if anybody who has the skills to do this, I know nobody who does, um, would be able to to attack it from this side because normal people, let's call them that, uh, will not ever start using IkiWiki as long as it's, yeah, as ugly as it is. That's, I and it's a really, it's a real pity because it's, it's <laughs> powerful, it's simple, it's, it can do insanely complex things but people won't start use it, uh, using it unt until such a point where they see a need to use it. And, and it's always, at least in part, about being pretty and appearing to be easy and appearing to be user-friendly. And it, it's it, it doesn't appear to be easy and user-friendly when you see a very basic web interface. Is that Better, not say. really. Yeah, I, I mean, I stole one myself. Yeah, I stole one of those. The the one by s yeah, the blue view one um, is the one I stole. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, having a bootstrap theme would help somewhat. But I think the the larger issue that you're getting at is that IkiWiki was developed for and by geeks who don't mind, you know, yeah. understanding this stuff. And you can slap a pretty interface on it, but that's really not going to get the crowd who is on their Mac and has five seconds total attention span to, de to, cons you know, to devote to setting up their wiki and then they're moving on to the next shiny thing. You know, there's a lot of, I'm, this, I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know, there's a lot of systems that do better and this is not an area that I personally feel that I need to work on. And if somebody wants to, you know, make a really easy, you know, find some way to make <coughs> it easier to set up, great. Um, I am interested in making it look prettier just because I like the default look, but I understand why you don't want that to be your look. <laughs> and um, did I change oh, the, si the default WikiWiki Wiki site is still using the default look? Good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, I realize that that scares some people off, but I think that that's okay. Are we just talking about better CSS, or is there something deeper going on here? I mean, you have you have to know how to use Git. You have to know how to clone a Git repository. You have to realize that you don't just, when you clone a Git repository, you're not cloning it from github.com, the repository that you created there and edited the page in line in your browser. And uh, so there's a few, you know, basic pieces of knowledge that you have to know. No, I, I wasn't. Uh, I, I was talking about CSS mainly. I, I wasn't talking about all the technical background. The, uh, at least in <coughs> my in my yeah, I, I, I'm really trying to get people to use Git-based tools. And one common theme is people who are comfortable enough with the technical side. They they are willing and able to to do all the technical stuff, but they want and need something which is pretty. Uh, simply because when they show other people, they don't want to be told, hey, your website is ugly. So it's really mainly about the end user look, about the CSS, about whatever to I make it. I think that's completely solvable. I mean, would you feel that if it had a bootstrap look and it was fairly well integrated, you could say, for example, add you know, tabs to the top of the bootstrap thing like you normally see on bootstrap sites and that kind of thing. Would that be sufficient or do you feel that it would need more prettiness than that. I think it wouldn't need that much much prettiness, but it it, it would need a, a, a common web accepted level of prettiness. I mean when you look at random websites, most of them aren't very special, mm. uh, at least to me, but uh, th they have a, a somewhat higher level of, of prettiness. Can you find the bootstrap example there? It should be uh, okay. uh, in, the <laughs> in the theme market, I think. Uh, also, I can, I mean, I can totally, I have like, at least popping on my mind, find five Iki Wiki websites that I find really pretty. Uh, most of them that I know had to uh, hack on the templates. Uh, also because they were French. Uh, but I can still like show you if you want. Yeah, sure, and put them up on the uh, okay. template in Chris. One yeah. thing that uh, people 
real question. Uh, w one thing I've, I've thought is um, if we uh, push at least the admins of the site uh, to jump through these hoops uh, to stand on a um, better and cooler technological background, um, I thought uh, it's a, a bit, bit of a shame that uh, we don't use this information that we have so well. So um, you c uh, IkiWiki will tell me when the page was last changed in Git, but um, yeah, what what I see is that, that we have not enough information to show a nice um, history like uh, MediaWiki does. We could even show a nice uh, branching and merging graph like, like GitHub does uh, um, out of the box. Um, so how do you feel about IkiWiki digging through the history to, to extract that kind of thing? Well, um, in a way, I like keeping it simple and just saying here's how you can integrate it with GitWeb or with your browser of choice so that I don't have to worry about maintaining all that stuff. Um, in, on the other hand, I think it'd be great if there were some kind of a plugin or something that could go back and render historical versions of pages on the fly and be able to, you know, browse back through the history and that kind of thing. So, um, so that's kind of a dichotomy. I don't know which side of it I come down on. I think that if somebody took the work to uh, make a plugin that did something cool with the Git history, I would probably say, okay, fine, I'll put it in as long as it didn't have a lot of crazy dependencies or something. Um, you know, I think you're very right about not taking advantage of all this. And my uh, my original idea with IkiWiki, or with what came before IkiWiki, was to have a uh, probably a dynamic wiki that uh, allowed you to actually fork and traverse different forks and go back and forth and all that kind of thing, um, you know, on the fly and see the site, you know, as it was at that point in history and so on, and take full advantage of version control. So, but but moving to a static site kind of you know, took a little bit of that away, so. Okay. Are you still trying to, to show, uh, to show other themes? Yeah. So all, all these are like Ikiwikis based. Uh, mm, you have JavaScript uh, deactivated? Uh, yeah, I, I, I have pretty much everything available. Could you just uh, activate JavaScript yeah. on this one? I'll take it to another browser which has, uh, has reasonable defaults if you want to have the pretty stuff. Yeah, just this one, just is all. To show you, uh, this is one trick that I came with. So it's a radio show, uh, and you still don't have JavaScript activated. I Do you? I have. Oh, weird. So maybe it's broken. but. So basically, you have JavaScript that that finds the MP3 leak, MP3 links and replace them with an online uh, uh, audio tag. Uh, so you actually, you get you get uh, to to get the, the radio show. Um, can you back up to the others? That's one. That's uh, DIY ISP near Grenoble. It also. Uh, yeah. This is a quickie. Uh, the, the one I show you already. Uh, Grezi, uh, on over ISP in Grenoble. Uh, same peop more or less same people than, than Resin, but it's still like wiki wiki. Uh, one, one thing that is nice uh, was submitted was the, if you go on the front page, uh, probably there is a, oh, yeah, you still have JavaScript de deactivated. So there's a calendar here they actually uh, working with uh, calling JavaScript to display a calendar in a way that is actually a uh, feature, um, no. Yeah, Th because otherwise it was too slow uh, to rebuild every single pages every time the calendar changed. Uh, so that was submitted, I think. Uh, Tails. Uh, the, the biggest IkiWiki website that I've ever been, that's why they understood, because they were like, Several thousand of pages of commands, or I mean, intricate you could tell, but. Um, before we disabled our web forum, like a month ago, we had about 
3,000 uh, threads and something like 10,000 comments and rebuilding the whole website to update the sidebar that shows the latest release version was a bit slow. <laughs> Um, we had talked earlier about the multiple sidebars thing. This is kind of one of the blockers to it. Is I know that people are going to get into this kind of situation with other things. If I, if it has the ability to have a header and a footer and all that, they're going to ac realize that oh, if I change this, it takes has to rebuild and it takes forever. And so we need some kind of solution to that. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. but it already d it but it already does with the sidebar. So well, yeah, yeah. And actually, people are putting stuff in the sidebar, which That's is a general. big problem. <laughs> I have to support, well I, you know, I often have to help somebody who tried to put a calendar in there or something and didn't fully realize yep. the implications of that. And there really ought to be a better way, but so far I haven't found it. Um, um, I, I think the, are you running with Poe on all of your, uh, okay. So, so it's only a few pages that are using Poe and then the rest was just scalability of the index file probably. Uh, yeah, um, um, I think we're a little out of, lo out of time for people who want to join other talks. Um, are there, let's say, final questions at least for the part that's being recorded? Or that's the general official DevConf 13 IkiWiki BUF? So that's, uh, thank you, Joey, for answering many questions. Well, thank you for organizing this and putting it on. Well, thanks for joining here.